Greetings. Welcome once again to Shorty on the Fly, Beginner's Fly Tying Lesson number four. And today we are going to close out the holy trinity of fly tying materials. We began with hare's ear, and then we went to pheasant tail, and this is the one that has been around forever. We are now going to deal with peacock curl and tie ourselves a partridge and peacock, although I'm not using partridge, I found a material that works a little bit better, but we're going to introduce you to working with a hackle for the first time. And this is a soft hackle, meaning it's a usually a hen hackle uh, rather than a rooster hackle. It is uh, a lot softer and has a lot more movement in the water than a uh, rooster hackle would. And rooster hackles are generally used on dry flies. And this is a, a sunken fly or one that you would fish just below the surface. Um, so let's get started. This is not a difficult pattern. Um, just a few more materials to deal with. And I have a size 14 nymph hook that I'm using on here. You could use whatever you like. You could use a, a wet fly hook if that's what you have. Um, but uh, it's a size 14 2XL nymph hook. And for thread, I'm using black 60 Danville today. So let's get our thread started on the hook. And we want to leave about an eye, hook eye width behind the eye of the hook so that we have a lot enough room to tie in our hackle at the end. You don't want to crowd the eye. That's a mistake that beginners make a lot, uh, but we don't want to do that. So we're going to dress the hook with thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. And now I'm just going to take some open spiral wraps to get my thread back up to the front. And this is where I'm going to tie in a rib of fine gold wire. Um, I have this spool of gold wire that I've had forever. I don't know how much is in there, <laughs> but I've been using it forever. Uh, if you have the store-bought stuff, that's just fine. Um, whatever you have. I'm going to lay my wire on the far side of the hook and capture it. And I'm tying at the front because I always want to tie my material at the front and work my way back to avoid creating any bumps. If you tie everything at the back, you get a lump there. And we want to try to avoid that. I'm going to do the same thing now with the thread and come back to the front of the hook to tie in my um, peacock curl. And this is just strung peacock curl. It works just fine uh, for this fly. And I've got four strands of peacock curl here. And what I want to do is come in and snip off the brittle tips and even them up, which will make for a much easier tie in. Just put it on top of the hook, take a wrap, and you don't have to be too careful here. You can take open spiral wraps to get your way back to the back of the hook. Now, just as in the pheasant tail, I'm going to leave that thread hanging there, and that's going to uh, allow the fibers of the peacock curl to stay together as we wrap forward. Just as we did on the pheasant tail, we're doing the same thing here. And I know sometimes people um, like to wrap the hurl around the thread. Um, that's okay. I don't, I'm not doing that because we have a rib here which is going to make it um, pretty sturdy and take care of, you know, the peacock hurl coming un, undone on you. That won't happen because we have the rib here. So I get up to the front of the hook, still leaving that space, take a couple of wraps just to secure the material, and then come in and trim off the excess nice and close. I know that conventional fly tires say counter wrap your rib. I don't do that. I don't think it makes a bit of difference. Um, and sometimes it traps the uh, little fibers when you come the other way, and I don't really care for that either. So I'm gonna take five turns on this fly. I know people say take four or five. No, pick one. Take four or take five. When you get to the front, switch hands. And now, I'm not going to dull my, my scissors by cutting this off. We're just going to helicopter it and it will break off. Of course it will. Yeah, no, not always. All right, we'll try that again. There we go. Okay, breaking off. Now, we're going to tie in a hackle, and what I'm using instead of partridge is this Brahma hen 
which has great feathers on it. And they're a little bit easier to work with than partridge. If you have partridge, that's fine. You can do exactly the same thing. But what I've done is I've picked a hackle free from the hide and I've taken off all of the fluffy lower fibers so that we can grab hold of the stem a lot easier. And then in order to prepare this for tie-in, I'm grabbing the tip and I'm gonna preen back. Hope you can see this. I'm gonna preen back the fibers on either side and have myself a little thing left over and I'm gonna trim that and create a tie-in point. So I'm gonna come in snip that off and that really is I know it looks like a little bit but it's all you need and then just come in with the thread wrap it right over top sometimes if your thread doesn't want to skip to the back there if you give it a counterclockwise spin uh, it'll make it jump rearward and then you're good to go now the way you can do this some people use their hands some people use regular hackle pliers what I found works best for me is to use plunger style hackle pliers which allow me to grab the tip of the stem yeah the camera's in the way there we go now hold it straight up and preen those fibers back slightly all right and now we're going to take just two wraps of this one two that's it now I know this looks funky it looks weird it looks all wonky stay with me you'll be okay in here just a second pick up your thread run it around the hook twice okay don't be afraid I know it looks weird you're gonna be cool in here just a second then come in and trim off as close as you can get and I'll look at that that's horrible looking isn't it well, we can fix that. What you want to do is come in with your fingers and pull those fibers back and out of the way. Sometimes they don't want to cooperate, and I'm leaving that in. It's not a perfect thing, tie-in flies all the time. And take some wraps, collect everything, and look at that. They're swept back nicely. Everything is in order, and they don't look nearly as nasty as they did when we started out. At this point, come in with your whip finisher. Do a three or four turn whip finish. And there you have it, a partridge and peacock. Uh, you, can never be, uh, you can never have too many soft tackles in your box. You can do this exact same thing uh, using pheasant tail for the body the exact same thing using the hair's ear for the body so if you watch the previous videos why don't you try doing the same abdomen without the bead but then use a soft hackle to finish it off i hope this has been helpful continue to like and subscribe to my page i bid you peace